Okay, I'm gonna start. So, um, some introductions first. Um, hello, I am Etienne. This is my Twitter handle. You can follow me so you can talk to me later. I'm a software engineer from Brazil. I'm currently based in London where I work for Red Badger. By the way, we are hiring, so if you have any interest in going to London, um, this is our website. I am very active in the Lua community. I have worked in many projects that are Lua related. So I am the lead developer of Sailor, which is a web framework in Lua. I participated in Google Summer of Code twice, not once as a student and once as a mentor. I'm also running uh, the Lua conference in, in Rio. So um, come uh, apply for the call for papers uh, that is open right now. The call for sponsors is also open. So if you work in a company that uses Lua, please send help. Um, OK, so um, the contents of the talk. Um, I'll show a little bit of what's no MCU after all. I'll hopefully do a demonstration, and then I'll share some resources so you can get started on your own later. OK, so um, what is Node MCU? I, I had no idea until last year a friend of mine got to me and said, oh, you are the Lua girl, right? Here, take this gift for you. Like, oh, OK, um, what is that? And now I am here giving a talk about this. So thank you, Flacky, if you're hearing. Um, so yeah, so what is it? Um, so the first thing you have to know is that NodeMCU is actually not the board. NodeMCU is a firmware that runs on this very tiny board over here that is called ES ESP8266. I'm going to pass it around in case you want to take a closer look. Um, but yeah, so um, some specs. So um, it has a processing power of 80 megahertz. It has um, memory of six, 64K. I know this sounds like very little, but it is way more uh, than on the popular boards. So for example, if you compare with the Arduino Uno, the, um, well, then this little ship is like way faster and it's also um, way, way cheaper. So the price range of this one is between $3 and $10. I'll say that $10 is like the tops you find maybe um, on the fruit store or spark fun. Like if you go to AliExpress, you can find them from maybe, maybe two and a half. And well, if you get an Arduino Plus, uh, the Wi-Fi Shield, you could easily get to up to $50, which could be a little too much for just experimenting something you don't know, starting out. It can be like a big investment for uh, a, a beginner's project. So yeah, it costs $3, it is very powerful, and it has Wi-Fi. Um, uh, there are some, some advantages on, on Arduino, if I, if I want to be fair. So for example, this one uh, just, uh, have, just has one analog pin. Uh, the Arduino has more, so depending on your needs, this one will not be suitable. But to be honest, I only need one analog pin, so I'm pretty happy to just spend $3. Um, going on, as I said, the Node MCU is just the firmware. The whole thing... Um, that I'm passing around is uh, a dev board. So uh, it is ready to, to get started since it has like a voltage regulator because this, this board is, is Chinese and is fabricated by a company called Espressive. So the tiny square over here is DSP uh, model itself. And then there, since it's open hardware, there are many companies that fabricate their own version of, of this board and of the model with DSP uh, core. So the most famous um, is the uh, AI Thinker and they had series of different modules with this ESP core. The most famous and the one that you see in, in the one that I'm passing around is DSP 12. And, and, and then they are part of the the whole ES2, ESP8266. Um, 
Oh yeah, the dev board also has like a serial entry, so it makes it easier to program um, with um, USB. Like I said, there are many companies that fabricate their own version of this, so you can find this on uh, all kinds of electronic shops. So um, SparkFun has their own version of this board with uh, DSP2. So a uh, nice thing about this one is that it's prepared to be stackable. Uh, it already has like an entry for the battery. It's all set. Um, it is a little bit up in the price range, but depending on what you want, this uh, will be really useful. Um, I discovered this one uh, a couple of days ago when I was researching for this talk. And I, um, so this uh, Wemos is very tiny and super cheap. So depending on the project you want to do, oh, you've got one. Oh, uh, nice. Nice, if you want to haze it so other people can see other models of it. <laughs> so there you go. And, uh, but the Node MCU firmware is not compatible just with the H266. Um, so this is an SP8285, which I only discovered so recently, so I couldn't get one before the stock to show around. But as you can see, it is super tiny and uh, and and it already has the the serial um, entry the voltage regulator it's super small so this is the perfect one for wearables in fact um so i'm very excited to get one of these for my next project and and then there is this one so this one is a novelty so this is the sp32 so the Node MCU firmware is not yet fully compatible with this one. There are contributors working <coughs> on it on GitHub as we speak. So um, if you want to join and take a look, and there is a branch going on. So I was fiddling um, the other day. Some work is happening. So there are some parts that are very compatible, but probably not the whole API is exposed. But this is happening. And this, in my opinion, uh, will be the true Arduino killer because it is super powerful. Um, it has already the Wi-Fi built in, like the um, 8266. Um, it also has Bluetooth. Um, it is super powerful, so it has over 500K um, memory. Um, it has, I think, a 240 megahertz um, processor. Um, so yeah, super powerful. The price range is still like um, still a little big, so it was I think it was around twenty twenty five dollars. But that I mean, we can say it's expensive if we compare with this one. But if we compare with an Arduino, it's it's still super cheap. So this is like I'm very excited to to get my hands in in one of those. Um, Okay, so how do you um, get started? So if you have a Mac, you probably need to get a driver for um, the serial entry of the, the Chinese module. I, I was just tweeting the other day that this is an adventure of going in websites and Chinese and Russians from links that strangers send to you on Stack Overflow and it sounds really really dodgy but everything worked i didn't get any virus it's it's okay so it's the official um driver for the chinese uh, manufacturer it's fine and so you, you after fiddling in many weird sites you you can get to a driver um and then for building the firmware normally you can only build it in linux but then there is this website uh, i forgot to open it on beforehand Um, so there is this website called um, NodeMCUBuild.com, and it is super, super useful. Because uh, then you can select uh, all the libraries that you want. Do not select them all, or nothing will work. So really, do select only the ones you need. So. Um, Normally, as you can see by default, um, you have the Wi-Fi, timer, 
um, GPIO file. Normally, I also <coughs> check the ADC for reading the analog pin and the WS2 uh, 2812 for, um, for the LED lights. But as you can see, there are many other stuff. There's CJs on HTTP, some cryptography stuff. Some of them I have no idea what they are. Um, but then there is a full documentation somewhere. Uh, okay. So you can find documentation on all of them uh, on the Node MC docs. Um, don't worry about getting all the links to the website and resources at the moment. I'm going to share them all on, on my slide once I'm done. So I'll post it on Twitter. Just take a look at my timeline. It will be there like 10 minutes after my talk. Those docs are also on the GitHub page, by the way. Yeah, the yeah. Store. They are also in the NodeMCU official website. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I, I have a full list of, of resources. Wait, where's my mouse pointer? OK. Uh, okay, so you can build a firmware. Um, so once you get the, the firmware from, from the website, uh, you can flash it on, on your node MCU. Uh, so some, some vendors, they will sell the ESP8266 with this firmware by default. So it is super handy, but in, you, ca you can just get any ESP8266 and then flash the node MCU firmware. And this will allow you to program, uh, to program it in Lua, which is super high level and super easy to maintain and, and way easier to get started um, than see if this is like your first uh, wearable project for just getting acquainted with the API and with this kind of project. Uh, so to flash it, uh, there is a tool, uh, there is an official tool for this. It was not official beforehand, it was community created, and then the, um, the people who built uh, the, um, the board, they just hired everyone, and now it is an official tool. Um, so yeah, you can, you can just install it, and you can check your serial uh, ports. And then you can upload the firmware you just installed for that website to, to the board. And then you're ready to get started. There, there is, however, um, some editors who make your life a little bit easy. They look super ugly, but it works. Yeah, yeah, you can see. Oh my god, you're entitled. Can you read? Yes. Um, I really want an Atom plugin for this, so if anyone wants to build one, please do that. Um, so, this, um, so this is sort of an um, ID for uploading your code. You can also use it to write your code, but I don't. I just use Atom, and then I load them here, and then I upload them. Um, and then with this, you are ready to get, um, to get started with your board. So um, now is the demo time. So bear with me. <laughs> Things might go wrong. Um, so let's try some, where's my mouse? Oh, there. Um, Let's try some simple things. Uh, <laughs> Why am I doing this? So for some reason, um, so the um, WS2 uh, um, 2812 is a protocol that lets you deal with this um, types of LED. I'm, I should probably show on the thingy. Wait. Okay. 
Can you see that? Yes. It's the nail yeah, so these are the nail pixels. They are super interesting because they are dressable. So you can light individual LEDs, you can, um, you can work with them in any way you want. You can pick any RGB color, um, and they are wonderful to work with. Normally they sell in um, huge strips of, uh, I don't know, 50 to 150 LEDs, <laughs> but you can also buy them in tiny units like this one, which is like <laughs> okay which is uh, perfect for uh, rebel projects the way they are um, so this is like my tiny prototype the way they are attached to to the cloth is by using uh, conductive thread so I'm gonna pass this around in case anyone wants to take a look as well <laughs> please give it back to me <laughs> At the end of the talk, I really love my things. They, these nail pixels, they also need only one wire to control, which is very useful for... Yes, yes, so, so... So I'm using some alligator clips over here. Um, so one for the ground, one for the data, and one for the power. Um, for a tiny project like this one, uh, the power that comes from the node MCU itself will be enough. Let me show you over here. <coughs> the power that comes from this will be enough. But while well, these things, they can suck a lot of energy. So if you have too many of them, you'll need an external power, so power source for that. But uh, depending on the size of the project, it, it will not be necessary. I'm not sure. And um, what is the limit? I did not stumble on it yet, which is great. Um, but yeah, if you have too many, you need more power. But yeah, the data can still come from here and everything will be fine. So let me light some of this stuff. Wait, where again this, where is my mouse? I always keep losing my mouse. Okay. <laughs> so for some reason, um, the RGB of the API is not RGB. It is green, red, blue instead of red, green, blue as everything else. Um, but that's all right. So you can just send like the hash. Uh, and then, for example, if you do this, and then this thing is gonna show. What, where? Oh, thank you. Hopefully, this should light one LED uh, in magenta and one in blue. Well, it partially works, <laughs> which is a good start. Uh, um, hmm. What happened here? Oh, yeah. Well, still, then there should be two LEDs magenta instead of only one. Hmm, I hope I didn't burn one lead. Let me try something different. So this should light six leads in magenta? Oh, yay, okay. I, I don't know what was going on before, so this is the power of them. So I'm gonna show this on the... There you go. Um, so, other things you can do with the ESP is, as it has a Wi-Fi uh, module. Oh, let me get my face out of there. Uh, I, I'm gonna keep losing my mouse pointer all the time. 
As, as it has a very um, uh, OFI board, OFI uh, module and a very easy to use API, you can very easily just make an access point and launch a web server. So for example, So um, with the Wi-Fi library, we can f set the, the mode to access point. Uh, the Wi-Fi part, uh, the IP part is not necessary, but if you're launching a web server, you probably don't want the IP to keep changing all the time, so you can set one. Um, and then you can launch your access point with a SSID and a password. So if I send this over here, oh wait, if I send one by line, I need this to be global. Did it work? Oh yeah, um, there we go. So it is, it is super easy to create an access point with, with, with this board. Um, we can do things a little bit more complicated. So, um, oh, much better. How many devices can connect at the same time? Sorry? How many devices can connect to that device at the same time? Uh, I don't know. Is it more than one? Okay, let's yes. Try. You can, you, you can. You can try, let's see if, if it crashes and, and burns. You, you can go ahead. Wait, what was the password again? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Um, and then if you want to uh, create a web server, um, it's also super straightforward. Um, wait, this is not my example, is it? Oh, this is not the example I wanted. Um, but yeah, you can create a server, you can put the server to listen, and, and then you pass a callback, and then um, uh, with the client and the request, and then you can do things like parsing it, and then you can do stuff, uh, and then you can have a buffer that you can send to the client afterwards. Um, I do have some, I also wrote some libraries to work on, on, on my stuff. So, so this all started because I just graduated um, three months ago and I wanted to have a killing dress for my graduation party, uh, which is this one. So I installed some pixels on each flower of the dress. Let me put this over. There. <laughs> Again. So, I installed one on each flower of the dress, and um, the the silver dress is perfect because then this thing really blends in, in, into the cloth. Um, it's all sealed with the conductive thread that I mentioned before. I'm not sure if you can see it here. Can you see that? No. Okay. So, so the swivel thread does its work, and then here I have the entry point. So this was a, um, a very uh, fast project, so I didn't have time to get from the prototype phase to a very nice and soldered 
model. So initially, I didn't do like any soldering at all, and I literally glued the breadboard at the back of the skirt and connected the alligator clips to those entry points I showed before. So it was all very uh, um, experimental, but the part the the dress went on the party like for many hours and was a huge success. Um, let me get back to here. Okay, so I also created some libraries to um, to be able to manipulate these pixels easier. So um, let me try showing this way. Wait, let me, where is my, uh, uh, I'll go one minute over the top. Okay, so um, I started parsing some stuff on my web server and I created some libraries that help with managing all this so color. So it makes it very easy to, to manipulate the pixels externally. And then with that, um, I, I was able, so something that was part of my demo that was stolen yesterday. So you can have, there is a, an app for Android. I'm sure there is one for iOS and everything else as well. There allows you to create widgets that send HTTP requests. So uh, you can create some buttons with some preset post configuration. Then you can have different buttons for different kinds of animations. So with, um, timer and coroutines, uh, you can do very complex animations. So for example, um, uh, you may and then you can you can do this. So I can I can show the code to that, but I don't really have much time. So it's on GitHub slash Etienne slash Silver Haze, which is the name of my dress. And, and then I also got like plenty of resources, which I will not go through right now because my time is up. But I will share this slide um, on my Twitter account. So there is the links for co-projects, cool um, documentation, and other Lua resources. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Can this device uh, send HTTP requests, not, not only open Wi-Fi access point, but send requests to the outside? So the the question was if the if the device can send HTTP requests to the outside, and uh, the answer is yes. So not only it can launch, uh, it can. So the Wi-Fi model is not only prepared to open itself as an access point, but also to connect to an external network. And once you have that, you are able to send requests. So there is an HTTP library um, for that. So. Uh I assume that hackers can hack it and use it for DDoS schemes as all, all, all others, those fancy IoT devices. Probably. Um, so he was saying that then hackers can hack all kinds of IoT devices. <laughs> um, yes, this is like an kind ongoing of discussion on hacker news and all kinds of technology websites for ages. You can see the news of like hacked uh, I, baby. I, I, 
Modules. <laughs> How do you manage to save your silver haze uh, from being hacked? Uh, um, did someone try to turn you on and off the game? <laughs> um, well, it wasn't a party. People were pretty drunk. And I don't think they were trying to hack things <laughs> in the meantime. Um, is it waterproof? So the question was, is it waterproof? No. <laughs> I mean, probably not. I didn't try washing and I, I wouldn't. I, I really want to research like, and find out waterproof stuff because that will make things like way easier. Not only waterproof, but washable. Yeah. That is the point of being waterproof. Being waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> waterproof is not enough. Those Wi-Fi modules on EFT uh, controllers, like they, uh, they are pretty heavy on power consumption, right? Mm -hmm. um, quarter and a half. Uh, quarter, like 250 amps. Okay. Uh, million. So the question was... Like, uh, what kind of expect, what kind of, like, if you want to run on battery, what kind of... So the, the question was, um, so the Wi-Fi model of, of this board is a very power, uh, consumes lots of power, so how long can you expect um, a battery to run? So, um, well, that depends on your battery and, um, and depends on, on what other things you are doing. So, uh, I don't know, but my model was connected to an ex external um, battery charger hidden in my stockings <laughs> and um, it lasted the whole party which was like solid five hours more I was using the Wi-Fi model because I was switching um, so ah. for the party I also made a small Pebble app which was just a menu sending HTTP requests so the Pebble app was connected to the phone, which created uh, the Wi-Fi that the model was connected to, uh, a huge hack. And then I could send the HTTP request from the Pebble to the microcontroller. And then I could like switch colors and uh, switch blinking patterns. I had like rainbow patterns, uh, all sorts of stuff. I also had an um, equalizer model. So, um, so I was also using a tiny microphone and then I could read um, uh, the analog input from this and make the dress reactive to music. <laughs> I, so it was blinking with the music every, and everything, but I tried to refactor this before coming to, mo to FOSDEM and then I ruined it. So I can't really show it <laughs> right now. So yeah, because I was like, hey, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna present something. I need to make my code presentable before I put it on GitHub because well, I was doing my dress like the goal was just well, it will be my own code, and 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 I wanted to make it pretty, and then I fucked it up, and um, so uh, but yeah, the time is up. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>